Hello everyone, this is Dr. Priyanka Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Government, Digvijay PG, Autonomous College, Rajnangaon, Chhattisgarh. Today we'll discuss about bond of an hemer approximation. First of all, we'll talk about the energy of an isolated molecule. An isolated molecule contains various forms of energy. Uh, the most important forms will be discussed here. Some of the important forms of uh, energy possessed by an isolated molecule include translational energy, rotational energy, vibrational energy, electronic energy, nuclear energy, and spin energy. Now, translational energy. A molecule possesses translational energy owing to the motion of molecule as a whole. Means the molecule, when when the molecule uh, moves from one position to another position, this is due due to the form of energy known as translational energy. Second one is rotational energy. It is due to the bodily rotation of molecule about an axis. When a molecule rotates about an axis, then the energy uh, used during that rotation is known as rotational energy. Vibrational energy is due to the periodic displacement of atoms from their equilibrium position. When the atoms of a molecule oscillate to and fro, uh, from their equilibrium position, then the energy involved is known as vibrational energy. Electronic energy, it is due to the kinetic energy, electron nucleus attraction, inter inter-electronic repulsions. The nucleus is positively charged, whereas electron is negatively charged. Therefore, the electron and nucleus show attractive forces, whereas electrons are uh, possess similar charge, negative charge, therefore they show repulsions. Where uh, along with that, electrons show motion or transition from lower energy state to higher energy state. Therefore, kinetic energy and uh, attractive forces and repulsive forces are altogether responsible for the electronic forces present in a molecule. Nuclear forces are due to the motion of molecule. Spin energy is due to the presence of nuclear and electron spin. This equation shows the various uh, shows the relation between total energy and the various forms of energy found in a molecule. For example, E total is equal to the sum total of translational energy, rotational energy, vibrational energy, electronic energy, spin energy, and nuclear energy. These energies associated with a molecule are independent of each other. That means the translational energy doesn't depend upon the rotational energy, which doesn't depend upon the vibrational energy. I mean to say all these forms of energy are independent of each other, don't depend on each other. All the energies are quantized except translational energy. This means all the energy levels are quantized. Means when we are talking about rotational energy or vibrational energy, uh, energy levels exist quantized energy levels means having some particular amount of energy different levels exist so the, these forms of energy are known as quantized energy levels whereas translational energy is non quantized because different energy levels don't exist in case of translational energy next is that uh, you can see this highlighted box e translational is much lower as compared to e rotational which is lower than e vibrational and which is much much lower than e electronic this shows that electronic energy level has highest energy as compared to the vibrational energy level followed by rotational energy level and the least energy is possessed by translational energy Energy level diagram showing various molecular energies. You can see in this uh, diagram various energy levels are present. This box shows the rotational energy level which is the lowest energy, rotational energy level. These are the vibrational energy levels. And this box shows the ground state electronic energy level. This is the first excited electronic energy state. And this is the second excited electronic energy level. 
that's you can see all the electronic levels all the electronic energy levels possess do possess vibrational energy level along with rotational energy level the amount uh, the value of rotational energy is lower than that of vibrational energy which is uh, again lower than electronic energy level this is quite clear from this diagram now since various forms of energies as we have seen in the last uh, equation uh, for example translational energy nuclear energy spin energy these energies are lower as compared to rotational vibrational and electronic energy levels therefore these forms of energy have been neglected in this equation therefore e total can be written as the sum total of rotational energy vibrational en energy and electronic energy the mass and speed of electron and nucleus differ a lot you know the mass of nucleus is much higher as compared to small sized electrons therefore the electrons due to their low mass can move with higher speed as compared to the bulky nucleus the motion of electron and nucleus are approximated to be mechanically separable this means since the electron has high speed as compared to nucleus so during the time taken by an electron to show a transition from lower energy state to that of a higher energy state we can assume that the nucleus does not change its position we can assume the nucleus to be fixed therefore the motion of electron and nucleus are generally approximated to be mechanically separable max born and j robert offenheimer proposed the approximation in 1927 this statement the highlighted statement the motion of electron and nucleus are approximated to be mechanically separable this is the statement for born of an hema approximation now the term approximation what why is it called approximation because it is said that the motion of electron and nucleus are separable but actually they are not 100% separable therefore in order to make other calculations easier it has been approximated that these two are separable therefore it is known as born of an hemer approximation instead of a rule or principle the molecular wave function psi molecule is a function of electron positions ri and nuclear positions rj this is the equation psi molecule ri rj is equal to psi electron ri rj psi nuclei rj this equation means that the molecular wave function psi molecule depends on the nuclear and electron position similarly psi electrons yani uh, that means the electronic wave function also depends upon the position of electron and nucleus whereas the nuclei the nuclear wave function psi nuclei depends on the nuclear position born of an hemer approximation assumes that the electronic wave function certain assumptions have been made uh, according to the born of an hemer approximation regarding the electronic wave function and the nuclear wave function or nuclear mo motion so we'll see point by point the electronic wave function what are the assumptions of born of an hemer approximation for the electronic wave function psi electron first one is that it depends upon the nuclear position but does not depend upon their velocities that means the psi electron depends on the position of nucleus but it is not affected by the velocity of the nucleus it is independent of the velocity of the nucleus the nuclear motion is so much slower than electron motion they can be considered to be fixed i have already told you that the nucleus is bulky as compared to the lighter electrons therefore the lighter electrons can show transition with higher speed as compared to nucleus so we can assume that during the time taken by an electron to show transition from one energy state to another the time taken by nucleus is much higher so we can assume that the nucleus is fixed while the electronic transition takes place the nuclear motion psi nuclei for example uh, rotation or vibration sees a smeared out potential from the speedy electron the speed of the electron is higher therefore the psi nuclei 
has a smeared out potential the limitations of born of an hemer approximation include its failure to explain the certain excited states of polyatomic molecules it also fails in case of certain uh, ground state of cations separation of rotational and vibrational energies is not strictly valid due to vibration rotation interactions in certain forms of spectroscopy for example ir and raman spectroscopy we see vibrational and rotational interactions therefore these vibrational and rotational enter, uh, energies show interactions and therefore they cannot be regarded as completely separable therefore the uh, born of an hemer approximation fails in this case